Last week, someone on my Patreon had a very simple question for me. How much would the restaurant from the first Five Nights at Freddy's cost to build? So, you know, I see that cautionary tale that Scott was telling is really paying off. But in the process of answering this seemingly inconsequential question, I discovered something shocking. A secret that this game has been hiding for the past 10 years. A question that, to this point, nobody even knew they were supposed to be asking. A revelation that changes the very foundation of this series. This is the FNAF 1 building explained. Richard, hit that intro. Before I tell you this earth-shattering revelation, I think it's best that we start from the beginning. After all, this video topic was suggested by Aspa102 and voted on by all my patrons. If you want to support the channel and gain access to all sorts of cool perks like early access, exclusive gaming live streams, and the ability to suggest and vote on future video topics, check the link in the description down below. So let us begin with the initial question that kicked this whole thing off. How much would the FNAF 1 building cost to build. After doing some research, building and furnishing a restaurant in 2024 is going to cost you an average of $450 per square foot. The restaurant in the game was built in the early 80s though, so adjusting for inflation, it would have cost Fazbear Entertainment just $142.94 per square foot. So the obvious next step, we gotta know how big this restaurant is. The first FNAF game gives us this super helpful map of the restaurant. We're looking for the square footage, which is basically the total area of all the different rooms. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that this map is reflective of the actual dimensions of the restaurant, and that all the rooms are the correct size relative to each other. Because if I didn't, then this whole thing would be literally impossible. Finding the total area of all these rooms may seem super complicated, especially considering there's no scale to show us how big anything is. But with the power of some simple proportions, all we actually need to do is find the length of one of these walls and we can pretty easily find everything else. The most obvious wall to find the size of is well, literally the only wall in the game that we get a head-on look at, the front wall of the security office. Unfortunately, there's no handy ruler laying around the desk for us to take some measurements, but there is the next best thing. Paper. If we simply figure out how wide one of these sheets of paper is, and how many sheets of paper across the wall is, then we can find the length of this front wall and use that to find the area of the whole building. And lucky for us, paper actually comes in very specific sizes. At first, I assumed that these were drawn on standard A4 printer paper, measuring eight and a half inches across and 11 inches high since it's far and away the most common type. However, comparing it to other objects in the room, like the paper cup on the desk, which generally measures 95 millimeters across, these drawings seem to be far closer to an A2 sheet of paper, measuring 420 millimeters across by 594 millimeters tall. The chip tide. You come looking for FNAF lore, but you stay for an in-depth discussion on paper sizes. Using that, we can find that the front wall of the security office is 10.92 feet or 3.329 meters across. Using some simple pixel measurements and proportions, we can find the area of every single room in the restaurant and add them all together to find that the FNAF 1 building is 5,160.33 square feet. 
For reference, a typical restaurant is only upwards of 3,750 square feet, but Freddy's does need a lot of extra space for the stage and extra storage areas, so this number actually makes a lot of sense. Comparing that to our average cost per square foot from the beginning of the episode, the Freddy Fazbear's Pizza from FNAF 1 would have cost $737,617.57 to build in the early 80s, or $2,322,148.50 if you wanted to build one today and they wonder why young people can't afford homes anymore. This includes the cost of materials and construction, as well as the cost of appliances and furniture. I decided not to factor in the cost of the actual animatronics though, because as we discovered in a previous video, building animatronics capable of walking around freely in the 80s would have cost you a cool billion dollars. That might have skewed the numbers just a little bit. But there you have it. We've answered the question pretty easily. Except there's one problem. The figure we used for this was the cost per square foot of a typical restaurant. And the FNAF 1 building isn't your typical restaurant. I mean, yes, it's got killer robots possessed by the spirits of children murdered by the owner of the restaurant. That's pretty weird. But even before that, I'm not sure if you've noticed this or not, but this building doesn't make any sense. It's got a super strange shape, a weird empty crawl spaces between rooms, and possibly most strange of all, how do you get inside? If you look closely at all the camera angles, in this whole entire restaurant, there are no windows and no doors. But wait, is this haunted room actually stretching? Or is it just your imagination? Now, in fairness, these cameras don't show us every single inch of these walls. The front door is almost certainly located in one of these three blind spots, but there is clearly not a single window in this whole establishment. You could just chalk this up to the fact that, hey, it's a horror game. That feeling of being trapped with four killer robots and no means of escape might be ruined if you can just look out the window and see your crappy 1981 Chrysler in the parking lot. We could just accept this oddity and move on, but I'm not sure if you've noticed this or not yet. That's not exactly the way we do things around here. So I got to thinking, in the world of FNAF, is there a logical explanation for why Fazbear Entertainment would build a restaurant with no windows? After doing some research, it turns out that the answer is... Uh, not really actually. It's a pretty dumb idea to build a building with no windows. But William Afton is a pretty dumb guy, and I can think of one reason why he might choose to do this. Money. As it turns out, windows are pretty darn expensive, and typically account for 8% of the total cost of a building. By not including any windows, Fazbear Entertainment could have saved themselves $59,000 in the early 80s, or $186,000 today. That's a pretty big chunk of change. So if windows are so expensive, that begs the obvious question. Why does pretty much every building have so many of them? At first, I thought it was some sort of legal reason. Maybe any new building is required to have a certain number of windows per square foot or something like that. But after reading way too many building cones and zoning regulations for the country and the state of Utah where FNAF 1 is supposed to take place, no, this isn't really a thing. There are some laws about needing windows in residential spaces and bedrooms, but as far as I can tell, there's no law that requires a commercial space to have windows, so long as it has multiple points of egress in the event of a fire. Which of course the FNAF 1 building doesn't, but that's neither here nor there. So if they're not legally required, why does basically every building shell out the money to throw a bunch of windows everywhere? Well, put simply, People like them. 
They provide natural light, they can provide nice views, and they really open up a space. Is not having any windows going to seriously hurt the business of Freddy's and make people not want to come in? Eh, probably not. But in his effort to pinch every penny that he could, it seems that William Afton has forgotten to consider the reality of realty. No matter how successful Freddy's is, there will come a time when William or his company are going to have to sell that building, and not including any windows is going to seriously hurt the value of the property, because, as we've already established, most people like having windows. That means that any future buyer would have to install the windows themselves, and as we already know, windows are really expensive. In fact, installing new windows into a building that doesn't already have them is even more expensive than installing them during the initial construction process because you have to tear down walls and redo a bunch of stuff. And combine that with inflation and any potential buyer for this building is looking at several hundreds of thousands of dollars in renovations. That's going to turn a lot of people away and those that are willing to buy are going to have to factor this in to how much they're willing to pay. In the short term, William might be saving a decent chunk of change, but in the long term, it's going to cost him a lot, at least twice as much as he saved. Heck, in the FNAF movie, William says he doesn't want to sell the old Freddy's building because he's sentimental. But honestly, in the games, I don't think he could sell this thing even if he wanted to. Now, we've established time and time again on this channel that William Afton isn't the sharpest spring lock in the suit. And this does seem like the sort of ill thought out scheme that he'd come up with. But I have to imagine that the architects and construction companies that he worked with to get this thing made would have warned him about this and given him all the information, in which case, I find it hard to believe that he would still go through with his no windows restaurant. Honestly, if you can put windows in a building, there's almost no reason not to. Unless, of course, that's the answer right there. You should always put windows in a building if you can. But what if you couldn't? And this brings us to the earth-shattering revelation. The one piece of lore that people have been wrong about since the very beginning of the franchise. The truth that cracks this whole series open. The truth that Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is located inside of a mall. Think about it. In order to put windows in a building, it needs to have exterior walls. All this time, we've been thinking that Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is a standalone building, so of course they could have put in windows. But in a mall, where stores and restaurants are all lined up right next to one another, unless you're in a really good spot near the front, you might not have any exterior walls. It's very common for stores and restaurants in malls to have no windows because they're completely boxed in. Best case scenario, if they're on the top floor, they might have some skylights. And in fairness, in FNAF 1, you're never able to look up, so this very well may be the case. If this were true, it would also help explain the super weird shape of the FNAF 1 building and the random dual hallways that stick out the back instead of just having the security office and the storage closet open right into the dining area. They're just working with the space available to them. Freddy's being in a mall doesn't just explain the strange architecture of the restaurant, it also just makes sense from a business perspective. Having a restaurant located in a mall means there's going to be a lot more foot traffic outside your restaurant, which will lead to more patrons. People gotta eat somewhere, right? This is especially true for the 80s and 90s when Freddy's was open, as malls were a lot more popular back then than they are today. This isn't just me speculating either. Real life animatronic restaurants like Chuck E. Cheese that inspired Freddy's were often in malls for this very reason. 
Uh, heck, when I was a kid, I used to go to the Rainforest Cafe in my local mall all the time. That is, until it closed and got replaced by a Forever 21. But I'm not still mad about that or anything. I mean, who would be mad about the most magical restaurant on the planet being replaced by a bland corporate store that sells stupid f***ing jeans? The point is, in the movie, in videos, and I think in the books that I haven't read, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is usually depicted as a standalone building. But if you look at the actual architecture and the time period of FNAF 1, all the evidence points to the fact that Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is located within Hurricane Utah's local mall. If this is indeed true, then it would mean that the question that started this whole video is not as easily answered as I initially thought. Rather than building this restaurant, it's more likely that Fazbear Entertainment simply rented it from the mall. Rents for a space in a mall can vary greatly based on location, but in a small town in Utah, it's likely somewhere around $20 per square foot per year. For Freddy's, that would translate to $103,206 per year, or $8,600 per month. All things considered, not that bad. And there you have it, the lore-altering reveal. The grand theory that has evaded even the most eagle-eyed members of the FNAF community. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza is located inside of a mall. You're welcome, FNAF fans, for solving everything. What do you mean you're expecting lore about dead kids? What? No, no, no. I don't think you get what I'm saying here. We thought that FNAF 1 took place in a building, but it really takes place in a mall. I mean, I said I was going to change the foundations of FNAF. Malls have very different foundations from real buildings. They're so big. Really? Really? You still don't care? I don't think you guys are appreciating how big of a reveal this is. This whole time, the biggest threat to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza wasn't ghosts or serial killers. It was the Sparrows down the hall. And a massive thank you to all my patrons, including Alkazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for the win, Sidian, Gremlin the Goblin, Sherry and Mark, The Boss Killer 94, and Captain Kirby. This show would not be possible without your support, so thank you.